All right, so what world we got? I don't know how long it takes someone to tune in. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, we decided why not go live, right? Okay. So yeah, we'll see. So my phone is like. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna um. Ohio here. Hey, what's going on, man? So we're gonna do like a little color challenge and see if I can get it uh, the first time. Let's see. Hey, dude, hey, hey, come around here real quick. All right, hold on. Call the people in there. All right. Where do I get my packages from? Evan, good question. Um, so printed laminated worm bags for baits. They pretty much all come from China, man. Um, not gonna lie. It's an expensive investment and you have to get thousands of them at a time, and it's a very expensive investment. Um, so I had to um, I had to drop about twenty four hundred dollars to get the real uh, professional packaged uh, bags, um, and uh, the reason why is because you have to you have to have. Let me get some lighting on here. You have to you have to have big order minimums. Um, they're not these big plastic bag printers. They're not even going to turn on their machines for less than a few thousand bags. Um, so unfortunately, there's just no way that I know of to get like just a couple hundred for you know a minimal investment. It's usually a long process, and you have to go overseas to do it. And um, that's just the way it is, unfortunately. But my bags came from Hong Kong, China, and I got twenty thousand of them. So, um, and and I love them. I I think they look great, and it was worth the investment for me. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna get started with some baits here shortly, though. And uh, <laughs> this is not German beer. Sorry. It's German. Yeah. Buyer Boys Outdoors, shipment of Guggen baits headed my way. Okay, yeah, I'd love to check out some Guggen baits. We checked out some at Seminole. <clears throat> Where do I get my injectors from? Uh, so the twin injector comes from Bass Tackle. I think it's the only one worth getting, um, me personally. And um, I think their single injectors are amazing. I use a single injector from Bait Junkies, but he's not making injectors anymore. Um, so I would, uh, I would just, I would just stick to Bass Tackle. Angler's Inside, I do make shirts. You can buy these. There's a link, uh, in the description of some of my latest videos, I believe, where you can buy, um, a World's Worst Fishing shirt. And there are, um, and then there's a link on my homepage as well. So, how long have I been making lures? Hey, Landon, good name. That's my son's name. Um, I've been making lures since September 2012. And by the way, Avery, Mr. Simple Jack is Try here. It. He's the man. He's gonna catch a lot of fish for me tomorrow. Uh, triple injector, I've thought about it. Um, I just That'd haven't I just haven't pulled the trigger, honestly. Um, I think you can make some cool stuff with it. There's some, uh, there's a couple guys really killing it with the uh, triple injector. Um, I just haven't had one yet, so. Um, if anybody on here has a triple injector, please chime in and kind of tell everybody what you think of it. Um, some buddies and I want to head over to Lake Talquin, but all the places are booked. Any ideas? Huh? Can we We're help? Yeah, can we help somebody on Lake Talquin? Avery is a lake. I mean, he lives 10 minutes from Lake Talquin. Yeah. If you come, where are you from? I mean, if you're from out of town, I know Lake Talquin stays booked. Um, well, it, it stays booked in the spring with uh, crappy speck fishermen. It's it's one of the top speck lakes in the country. Really? There's and uh, isn't there a Holiday Inn? There's like a Holiday Inn at the exit. Yeah, you know, you, yeah, side. you might could find a a hotel right off Interstate 10, which is not far. But anywhere in Tallahassee, really, on the west side of town. We'll leave yeah. you within 10 minutes of the first ramp on Lake Talquin. Yeah, I mean, Lake, Lake Talquin is 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 an amazing lake. Uh, Florida Game and Fish stocks it with hundreds of thousands of bass and shad every year. 
it's the whole bottom is just nothing but trees it's like they they logged the lake and just left all the trees laying on the bottom so everywhere you go you're gonna find just these picture perfect brush piles on your fish finder and you think that you found the mother load but there's so many uh you you just have to know spots from uh just experience but well and it's a lake this, it's a this, lake too where you really can this guy can help you out you can go out there with good electronics and believe it or not i have zero electronics on yeah. my boat but it's not a lake a lot of people come to talcum and i think it doesn't get the publicity uh like a lot of lakes because a lot of people come there expecting to fish it like a typical florida lake and it's really not yeah this this lake belongs in like north alabama i mean it's it's a deep river reservoir and uh and, and it really just has nothing to do with florida fishing in my opinion i mean you're you're fishing you're fishing ledges along creek channels and river river swings hey what's going on too fresh how you doing man have i ever been to the gary yamamoto ranch in texas no i've only been to texas um just a few times playing music uh back in my uh music days so my hair looks like crap oh man i would love to go to chickamauga but uh no i don't get out much not with a seven month old uh baby <laughs> that's for sure you you really don't get out much uh unfortunately You're looking for swim baits for codfish have i ever fished cod? have i ever fished on the west coast uh no um it would be awesome though. yeah it would be awesome i i've i've been to the west coast but it was on pleasure <laughs> it was just a vacation so where in texas did i play at i played in uh corpus christi i played in beaumont and i played in um fort worth at an auditorium called bass hall funny enough bass hall right so only fitting bass bass hall but uh, it was a gorgeous venue it was great oh you're doing some course shots tonight uh terrence glow uh, okay so you're using glow plastic nice have I ever made nine or six cent shads? Well, I make a lot of sixes. Um, I just made, I just made a uh, an actual little hand pour mold myself of a six inch. Uh, I've never made a nine inch. The biggest I have is an eight inch. Um, oh, so Chickamauga is not any good. That's you don't hear that often. Chickamauga? Every time I uh, every time I hear about Chickamauga, it's setting records like every year. So, yes, I am backed up on orders. Um, I kind of stay backed up on orders. Unfortunately, I'm just a one man show, and uh, and it only takes a few orders to get me pretty backed up. My schedule's pretty challenging. Um, yeah, I'll try to make a two-piece injection mold. You can do it. You can actually do it out of silicone, but uh, I'm not there yet. I, I got to learn how to make a, an open pour one piece first. So, Hey, what's going on, Ben? Do I dip any of my baits to add color? Um, so like uh, so like dip and glow, like spike it dip and glow? I've, I've done it. I used to do it. Um, Avery Simple Jack does it a lot. Um, He'll, he'll pretty much put a blue tail on anything using the uh, using the spike it so yeah chartreuse on a on a crawl this time of year is hard to be mm -hmm. thank you Dave worked hard on that little mold it was fun do I make glow in the dark lures no I actually don't I've never experimented with it uh, but Terrence over at Two Fresh Fishing does make glow-in-the-dark baits, so give him a shout, and uh, he'll probably hook you up. He's uh, he's posted a lot of uh, a glow-in-the-dark stuff lately, so yeah. Any any time, Terrence. I like I like what you're doing. Gotta like keep the phone plugged in. So hey, we're up to 47 viewers. Thank you everyone for uh, tuning in. Let's get to it. Yeah. All right, well, hey, so what we're going to do is Simple Jack is uh, going to hold the phone, and I'm going to try to do a color challenge that he gave me, and uh, <laughs> and we'll see what happens. Um, why did I start pouring baits? Um, I came up with the Land is the Limit logo, which you've probably seen everybody else steal from me, 
and I just decided I had this cool logo and this cool name, so I wanted to um, I wanted to make a, a product to go with it. So I decided to do baits. Um, have I ever made a tomato worm? Uh, just like a tomato color? I've never used a colorant that said the word tomato on it, so probably not. I, I don't. What I we're don't. About to do <laughs> is, I don't. I don't think so. Huh. This next color is going to have some tomato looking. Yeah. Do I know of other channels that show bait creations? Yes. Um, well, uh, speaking of Terrence, there's a YouTube channel called Two Fresh Fishing. Uh, he does baits. Um, I think probably the biggest bait channel is called Marling Baits. Uh, he takes like wood and sculpts like amazing like wooden lures, makes all kind of stuff. Um, yeah, Nick, I'm sure you have seen my logo in Canada. It's in almost every country in the world. And, uh, you know, I, I, held, I hold a trademark on it and um, it hasn't done me any good. It's too expensive to sue people. So I've that that little fish hook design over there has been stolen so many times. Um, I just it, it makes my head spin. My brother-in-law and I drew that on a napkin uh, one night over at my sister's house. But uh, yes, Ben. Yes. So Kenco, uh, Kenco Fishing also um, does a lot with like colors. Like he he likes to play. He does baits on YouTube. He likes to take colors, like one color, and show you um, a couple different versions of the same color. Um, so check that out, Kenco Fishing, K-E-N-C-O, uh, Kenco Fishing. So thank you, Nick. Yes, give him hell. A lot of people steal my logo. All right, let's get to it. We're um. So I don't know. Yeah, if you'll just kind of like hold the phone, it's. Okay. I, yeah, I, I'm trying to keep my phone plugged in, so I don't really know what I'm doing. All right. Go ahead. All right. Uh, let's see. Where's your phone at? Yeah, right. part, that's a great angle. Well, they don't need to see it. So what we're doing is we're doing a, um, we're doing like a green pumpkin with purple laminated over like an orange. Um, and we're going fishing tomorrow, so we're going to make some grass grenades to, uh, to see what we can do. Um, yeah, I'm still backed up on orders, unfortunately. Um, Iron Man dies in Endgame. Um, okay, is that a spoiler? I, I don't watch any of that, unfortunately. Um, all right, so what we have is we have our DOP here. And um, so we're gonna go ahead and fire that up. I should have already done that, but we're gonna pop this in for about four minutes. And DOP stands for? Dead on plastic. That's right. Yeah, I, uh, I stay pretty backed up on baits. Um, so if, if you have emailed me and I did not respond, uh, it is not um, on purpose. It is me being unable to respond to all of the email traffic that I sometimes get. Some, some days I, I get a lot and, and it's just hard to do. Um, would I ever consider making a different style large swim bait? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you can never have you can never have enough swim baits, uh, in my opinion. Um, so, Bryce, yes, I do have a website, but I had to shut it down because um, I can't control the flow of the orders and what was happening. I would get, you know, way too many orders that I can make in a week because I I still work full time. I have a seven month old child. And um, I only have so much time to do it, so I, uh, I have to kind of pick and choose orders based on when I think I'll have time. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, I just kind of have to pick and choose which ones I accept based on my schedule at the time. Do I know who the Guggen Squad is? Um, well, I know I don't know any of them. I know who they are. I we're, mean, you've got... kind of Guggens. Right, we're Guggens in a way. Um, yeah, so, I mean, you have... Obviously, Lake Fort guy. You have Rob from Lunkers, Flair, a couple other guys. Um, I, oh, good question. What is my favorite color and lure to make? Yeah, I don't have an answer. There's too many. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way to pick that one. Yeah, you can talk to everybody if you want. Yeah, so I've been following the Guggen stuff. Actually, today I was watching a couple of their videos, and I must say they have... Dude, they have like the setup. They have taken over mm -hmm. 
those guys have become filthy rich. Oh my god! Uh, over what they've done, and it's actually genius. Really, really? and uh, the only time we've actually really been around their baits because you don't see them in stores a lot around here is uh, at the lake. Was it Lake Seminole for the FLW tour? Um, they were here, and we got to see. Uh, they had a whole display of their baits, and yeah, it's cool to go around and see. You know, especially yeah, a lot of what we see around here is your your <laughs> typical. You get zoom big bite, which we love. All these comp, I love their baits. I've fished them for years, but you don't get a lot of different things around here. Um, it's pretty streamlined for big bait companies, so it was cool to see someone like Guggen. Um, yeah. They've uh they've definitely taken over and they've started. I think they've got their own lineup of rods. Yeah, I, a couple of them have like their own individual. Yeah, dude, Ben, you're right. Yeah, the Guggen baits are expensive. They are like, very expensive. Uh, at the Scott Martin booth, they were um, it's like they were selling them for like nine dollars a bag. It was so, unreal. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was it was pretty crazy. I do it, like it I crazy. like the. Uh, um, one thing I do like that Guggen does, and I can only imagine how expensive it is to do that, but I like how they do the shells, and each, all of their baits are, in, uh, oh, to my yeah. knowledge. Yeah, they put clam shells in back, so that's, and that's crazy. And we're new to swim baits. Swim baits around here, other than a gambler, big easy, or easy swimmer, yes. um, we're so pretty can, new to that. And uh, I can't imagine putting a clam shell in that, but, I mean... They outsource, so they have somebody else do it for them. Because I, I'm not doing it, guys. You can promise you that. But one thing I do like about that, from a swim bait aspect, on a little bit that I do know about them, um, I've watched guys that really love to throw one. A lot, a lot of guys, like Mark Rose, is one that comes out uh, offhand. Yeah. He is very particular about a swim bait, and if it doesn't come in a clamshell like that. I mean, he will literally. I've watched him on live. He it's not straight. He'll take a bait and he'll he'll play with it for a minute or two over the side of the boat. And if it doesn't swim the way he wants, he'll take it out and throw it in the bottom of the boat. And uh, something I'm learning about swim baits You can baits do that is, when you get them for free. Well, <laughs> and having a streamlined swim, they, it's, a, it's a cool idea, but very expensive, I can only assume. Right. But um, I'm, a, uh, I'm not a big swim bait fan, but I love a swimming worm. And being from florida i mean if you don't have a swimming worm in your arsenal especially this time of year it uh he's talking about the speed worm guys which not I even the speed have, worm i don't I'll, have a speed worm <laughs> it, it's a deadly bait which chris actually does make a swimming worm yeah and uh i actually like it it's, it's a double tail it's uh it's the angling ai kicker worm if you guys want to check that out it's it's pretty awesome but it's a it's a it's a different different presentation. I've I've learned a lot around here is um, anytime you can change it up. And uh, that worm he's got with the two, it's got two appendages, two little kicking legs, and yeah, it's pretty. It's pretty a deadly pretty worm. Pretty. The fish around here see a lot of speed worms, a lot of what's the gambler, the razor worm, or no, the uh, razor worm, the burner worm, burner worm, burner worm, worm. Yeah. Ben, how do I package my crawls? Um, so what I do is um, what I do is I um, well, I wish I had some crawls, but I'll take these swim baits. So the way the way that I package a crawl, this is the bottom of the bo uh, the bottom of the bag. I lay one end facing that way and one end face one facing that way, sort of like you would package a swim bait. And I just stack them up in the bag. I don't use worm oil or nothing. I mean, if I've let them cure long enough. I think they're fine. I, I don't think the claws get too crinkly or, or anything like that. What's my favorite drumstick size? Good question. So this is the Thomas Lang signature stick. It's almost a marching snare drumstick. And uh, if you guys have never seen Thomas Lang play drums, get off my YouTube channel and look him up. He's awesome. He's, he's the best. Is that how you package your stuff, Terrence? All right. See what we can do. Yes, two fresh fishing loves uh, 
loves that worm. He calls his the Slim Kicker, which that's is right, actually that's right. Yeah, that's a that's the a best pretty name, the best name ever. That defines it perfectly. The best name ever. Yeah, because it's like a skinny, it's like a skinny uh, speed worm. Yep. That that kicks. And so. I like the taper, and it Woo. it tapers. Nice. Guggen's Bandito Bug is the bait that I hear about the most from Guggen. That seems to be like their bait that's really that's really taken off. And I think that's the one that um, it's created a lot of controversy. Yeah, honestly. they 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 licensed the tail from uh, Strike King because it has the Rage tail on it. So I'm sure there's a couple of uh, overseas mold makers knocking that one off as we speak. So yeah, you package them the same way. Yeah, I I mean if you let your baits cure, I think you can just throw them in the bag. I mean really, I mean it, if it's a good bait and you're selling direct, you know. I mean, the majority of us aren't doing retail. You know, I, I did retail where I was putting my baits in stores and I had to make barcodes and labels and care about how it looked. Now I just put them in the bag. So well, and if it's a good bait, it doesn't matter. And on a crawl, I love, I love a zoom crawl. A lot of crawls, you know, are awesome crawls, but they're super soft. And, uh, one thing that I've learned on a crawl is I want a crawl to be the farthest thing from super soft. And here, if, uh, get, get, get in on some of the action here. Yeah. All right, here we yeah. go. Yeah. So I have to do like a, like a green pumpkin purple top. And uh, you, you guys have probably seen me use this a lot. This is MF Dark Watermelon. And um, it's, it's, it's my favorite non-pearl color. It's awesome. I absolutely love it. What got me interested in drumming? Um, at a young age, uh, so my dad is, is, a, is a guitar player. He's an incredible guitar player. I've grown up around live music and going to band rehearsals and stuff when I was little. And I just always like to watch the drummers play. And I kind of learned that I had a little bit of coordination. And my dad encouraged me to play drums, of course, um, because that's what dads do. And uh, so I got a drum set on my 10th birthday, and by the end of the night, I was already playing along to a couple of my favorite songs. You know, I mean, this is the early 90s, you know, so I was, I was playing along to like Garth Brooks and <laughs> some of that old stuff, and um, just kind of learned really early on that I could do it. And that was um, all, all it took for me, so. It, it, it was not, it didn't take much more than just a couple hours, and I was like, this is so much fun and, and, and everything, it, it was awesome. Buckeye Bass and TV, like the name, what's going on, man? Let's see. So I have to do like an orange bottom. That's almost perfect, man. Yeah, yeah and, and in fact, Terrence, Garth Brooks just played a show near me, so I'm in Tallahassee, he was two hours away from me in Gainesville last week, and uh, a couple of my friends went, but I couldn't make it. All right. So on this top side, I wish it would just show the, do I fish bass only? No, in fact. Um, so I have, um, yeah, that's that's not bad. It might come on. Yeah, yeah, it might come on done. Mm. Let's see, hold on. We're trying, sorry, we're trying to. <laughs> My, my poor arm's popping. Yeah. Let's see if we can get something going here. Yeah, we definitely don't don't just bass fish. It uh, may or may not. You're gonna have to like. The problem is that that's a round cup. We need to uh, yeah, I know. You know, like here. You take that, and put it on the back. Damn. Sorry. I'm trying to adjust. Oh, because that's like sticky. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've actually done a lot of cat fishing. I used to, um, I used to go after flathead catfish. You know, the big, uh, the big Appaloosa cats in the river. And I got pretty good at it for a while. <laughs> but um, that's back when I had an aluminum boat, and you just—it's hard to tear up a fiberglass boat in the river. You, you hate to do it.
Oh, is the fan noise over, bad over here? Yeah, say, yeah, sorry about that, guys. All right. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll yeah, we'll, we'll reconvene. Um, yeah, so green pumpkin, purple. Dude, I, I, I like this already, actually. Yeah. It's a beautiful color. Yeah, I, I, li I like where you're going with this. Yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, a green pumpkin purple. I don't know how well that's coming through. This, uh, my camera on my phone is not that good. So, caught your first catfish on a bobber and a worm. Hey, that's still one of the best ways Where to Where we catch all started. Is, that's one of the best ways to catch a catfish is a night crawler, apparently. So, nothing wrong with that. We just love to fish. If, yeah. if, if we can catch it, we've caught everything from bass to tarpon to I, gar. I used to literally go gar fishing for like the big long nose gar. Which is actually extremely. Live in Michigan, not too far from dead on plastic. Yeah, 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 yeah. If, if you see them, tell them I said hello. Yeah, they're up there in like Jackson, Michigan or, or something like that, so. Do I make big lures from pike and muskie? Yes. So I have a swim bait that is, this is an eight inch swim bait. And then this is a seven inch swim bait. Those are the biggest two shapes that I have. And uh, they're, they're pretty large. All right. I got to pop these back in the wave real quick. So does this look anything like the color that you want me to make? Yes. I meant big. Okay, I'm not big enough. No, those are the biggest that I have. I have only seven and eight inch baits. You must be looking for something like they throw in California. Yeah. You know, those, those freaking, uh, they're like a two pound bait or something. <laughs> something down here that I bet the fish don't see that I would almost guarantee would be dynamite, especially on a lake like we have Lake Talcum, which it's predominantly big gizzard shad would be a big glide bait. And Chris and I like to fish docks at night, lit up docks. And you can, sitting around those docks, all you see is giant gizzard shad. Yeah, I mean, these gizzard shad that are, that are big. And you know that if you, you threw a big glide bait up there, it would probably be. Oh, fishing in Ireland. Hey, do you ever catch those Wells catfish? Those, uh, those like 200 pounders, those European catfish? Chris, I need to go saltwater fishing with us sometime. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, and Simple Jack. Do I make any small panfish lures? No, I don't have any molds for specs. Um, that'd be fun though. I think I think we could do some cool colors. We could we love the spec fish too, so we could probably come up with some cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I hey Sam Bond, what's going on, man? Yeah, I do sell baits. I'm just I get a lot of bait orders and I, I get backed up real easy and then I have to stop taking orders because I don't want to take somebody's money and then not give them their stuff for a month. Um, oh, a stinger, really? You're using a stinger? Oh, no catfish in Ireland, my bad. Well, yeah, I, I figured that y'all had those Wells cats over there. I got those pipes. Oh yeah, this looks good, man. I think I'm with a lot of you guys. Um, I'm patiently awaiting the day that Chris decides to hang up the nine to five in the workplace and uh, do this full time. <laughs> yep. You're crazy. Yep. You're crazy. He. All right. All right, we're gonna make some baits. Here we go. So this is a green pumpkin purple with an orange. Yeah, you know, I, I've done the baits full time before. I, I, I ain't going back. It's it's a lot of work, but I enjoy making the videos and, and taking some taking some custom orders. That's that's what I like doing. All right. So this is uh this is the stinger mold from uh, Angling AI. I call it the grass grenade, and um, it's a freaking awesome bait. So hopefully we made something that looks decent here. Can you uh, get the comments back up? Yeah. Yeah, yeah see? <laughs> hey, you know what, Chris? Go for it, man. Go for it. I, I did it for a couple of years and got some momentum going. And um, 
Yeah, it does turn into a job. You're right. And uh, was, you know, had a distributorship deal, had my baits going all over the area. And it's just margins are tough using hand, in, hand injection. You know, no matter how good you get at hand injection, you're still limited with your production and your efficiency. Um, there's only a couple guys really killing it, um, like full time with the hand injection. Um, you know, Dave Dave McCready comes to mind with uh, Angler's Choice up in Canada. Um, you know, I was doing it for a couple of years, and um, and then I uh, I just I got burnt out just doing it all day every day. And uh, yeah, my girlfriend and I were trying to get married, and you know, I just I entered the workforce like everyone else. You know, that's how it goes, and I'm quite happy with where I'm at career-wise so um, but yeah you know the, the the videos are fun I enjoy communicating with new people and you know talking baits and stuff so we'll uh, I'll make videos as long as you guys watch them how about that Dave from Angler's Choice yep yeah he works hard you know whenever he Whenever he puts out a picture showing hundreds of bags of packaged baits, I mean, that is a lot of labor that he put into that. You have to love it. And he he has a lot of molds. I mean, he's got his tube system down, Pat. I mean, he makes more tubes than, like, anybody. So um, it's, it's pretty crazy. Oh, okay. Stinger from Bass Tackle. Six, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I knew that Angling AI makes a smaller stinger, but it's not small for a spec, so. How long does it take me to get an order from Dead On Plastics? Um, their shipping time, if I order on a Monday, I might have it on a Friday. Uh, you know, it just depends on their schedule, I guess, of how, how many they have to ship out that week. Hey, what do you think, dude? I love it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's like a green pumpkin. Yeah, you can see it real good in the sprue. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's like a green pumpkin orange. I should have made the green pumpkin. Uh, like, should I have made it thicker though? Uh, I like the. <clears throat> I like it. Um, yeah. It. Now yeah, hold on, lighting's always a challenge at night. Here, actually, let's get out of. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, not too bad. Hello from uh, Washington. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's pretty sweet. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how well you can see that here. How much money have I invested in all of my bait making stuff? Good question. Um, yikes. My so my family and I invested in this whole thing, um, and I think probably. I think like our main investment like within the first year and we went all out we bought a lot of molds um, you know we were doing plastic by the 55 gallon drum um, we were doing um, I mean you know we bought the the professional packaging um, I would say probably about an $18,000 investment to get land is the limit like really going um so but you know that's been many years ago and that investment's gone a long way ever since then uh let's see does the plastisol boil over in the vacuum chamber yes it does so for example a cup right you put it in the vacuum chamber only fill it about halfway because if you have a lot of air it's going to boil over um, so what you want to do is to try to keep moisture from getting into your plastisol. Um, close your buckets, seal your buckets as best you can, and, um, you know, use good plastic. You know, I recommend that on, of course. Uh, Calhoun's is great. Um, Polysol is really great stuff. Let's see. Are my baits dented? Uh, I don't think so. These, no. these particular ones don't look dented. No. I don't. I don't. I don't see any errors in those. Um, 
Yes, if you open the if you open the burp valve on your vacuum chamber and the cup is directly below it, it's gonna blow plastic all over your vacuum chamber. So um, keep that in mind as well. You can uh, you can ruin a cup of plastisol and it'll all be in the bottom of your uh, pot if you're not careful using your vac vacuum chamber. <laughs> is it that bad? My hands are sore. Oh, here we go. Our first live stream and I have a complete failure. <laughs> Those didn't turn out at all. Yeah. The problem is that it's uh Uh, so Drew's Real, the baits that I sell, uh, I have a couple of custom molds. Um, the majority of them are just offered by the American mold makers. Um, so I designed my uh, professional bags uh, with my sister, who's my graphic designer. She did my logos um, and all of that. So we, we did the bags in-house and then had them made overseas in Hong Kong. Yeah, buddy. Not bad. What is my favorite bait color? Oh. Um, I would say my favorite bait color is probably made by my buddy Brad. Uh, he runs Oracle Lures, and it's a brim color called MK Ultra Gill. Um, that's, I think that's probably the color like, if I'm just going to sit around and stare at a color, it's probably that one, to be honest. Huh. It's an amazing color. It's an amazing color. Hey, where'd you put the other, uh... Okay, well... But yeah, what we were doing was just a quick challenge. Well, it's not necessarily a challenge. Avery said, hey, I want you to, um, to, <laughs> to, to make this color. So it's like a green pumpkin with purple, and then a, uh orange bottom hello crystal thank you for watching my videos it's quite flattering so uh please keep watching if i uh if i keep growing i'll keep making videos so yeah in fact i'm gonna go get my mk ultra gill bait that brad sent me real quick avery's gonna sit in and talk to you guys there you go was gonna be good. <laughs> now i had I wanted Chris to make this color um, here in North Florida. I mean, a lot of the South is like that. Uh, this time of year, it's hard to beat a bluegill type bait. And, um, you know, a lot of the bait companies, a lot of the styles that we get around here, color variations, they're very generic. And I feel like a lot of the fish see the same colors. And from what I've learned from my experience is Anytime on a lot of these real high pressured lakes like we fish around here, anytime you can change it up um, and do something just a little different, it seems to produce. And I love this color. Um, I like I like a laminate. And for flipping, uh, being kind of a reactionary technique, um, I like something two tone. I feel like it gives it a little bit more of that flash. And down here, a lot we have a lot of river brim. I call them, and they're 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 two tone. They have, you know, they have a real green pumpkin dark back, and their belly is, you know, a, a real predominant orange. Now this is not as orange as some of the fish we get, but this right here is a very, um, it's it's a good all around color. That's that orange. This is the orange that's, that I'm talking about. That's that about. orange river river belly. Uh swim bait right there orange belly yeah. and it's a i mean this this bait right here on a swim jig or which you hate to put it on i mean this just alone with a screw lock hook a weighted screw lock yeah. hook all is all you need um a work of art like this you really don't want to cover up with a skirt um right but i but i really like this bait and this bait has a hundred different uses um i've used it on a swim jig i like it because i like the real wide profile helps that swim jig stay up some and uh it's a great bait for bed fishing um a lot of people think that bed fishing is real generic that 
you can throw anything on it and as long as you irritate that fish long enough he'll bite well i've found that not to be true more times than none and a profile like this um it, it's a great bait and it's a softer you can make them softer and the hook penetrates great and uh it's real buoyant um and buoyant i guess what i mean by that is uh, i like to fish i like to fish these on a uh, a lot of times I'll fish on a drop shot as crazy as it sounds and the width of this bait it just seems to stay up real good in the water column and when you take these appendages and you break them apart um, it, it has a lot of flair and uh, like I said I've just found this to be a dynamite bed fishing bait dynamite bait all around so uh, and I've, I've caught fish on a ledge using this on a football head jig so <laughs> it, it's a great all-around bait but the color it's hard to beat and so uh when we came up with this and everybody knows springtime orange crawfish that kind of color is, is is a great bait so that's kind of why i came up with that so to me it has a mix of a bluegill or a brim and a crawfish so that's what we got fire some of this up real quick what are we making now just some glitter colors some glitter colors. Now we're going with glitter, glitter colors. And uh, how many of you guys out there? That is MK Ultra Gill. Look at how my friend blends the um, like like. Look at how he blends. So like like his his glitter. You know you you have like a lot of a, a blue glitter, and then it looks green one second, and then you have like this this kind of goldish pearl and. And, and all of that I mean and, and then you know it this is the same I, I have this mold um, where's my uh, where's my uh, pinfish bait at oh yeah yeah here it is oh not this over I don't know how to set it back up yeah yeah so that's the same mold as the one that I did a, a pinfish in but this is just such a great natural brim color and uh, yeah my buddy Brad Hardy is He's one of the best in the game, guys. He's been he's been pouring baits for 16 years. So, and then check this out. This is his this is his rainbow trout. Really, really, really great, great stuff that he does. So, you know, you can just take a look at his two baits, and they're they're just a class above. So, hopefully, I'll get there one day. But uh, you know, I do fun things like this pinfish. You know, not too bad. But, you know. So, a lot of guys, it seems like, um, you know, a lot of guys I know and a lot of guys around here throw a lot of reaction baits. Uh, it's, I, I'm kind of old school. I like the old school rubber worm. If, if you guys got a particular worm color, I'm always open to, I like to learn new colors, learn, you know, there's a lot of things out there that, um, like certain worm colors that guys just swear by. So if, if you have any colors in a, in a worm that you just, it's it's, it's go-to, um, it's something that you feel like you can catch fish on pretty much anywhere you go. Um, I love the old school, like tonight, we made, uh, this time of year, springtime, I love to throw a float worm. And uh, it seems like kind of a dying technique. It, it was something that was big in the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, and it's kind of dwindled. But it can be a, a dynamite technique to catch those springtime fish. So if you guys have like a specific worm color, whether you're fishing on a Texas rig, you know, trick worm color, uh, shoot us, shoot us those, those colors, and especially like a float worm. I mean, how many of you guys out there just still fish a floating worm um it, yeah. it's a it's an awesome and you know and something i i wonder on float worms you know you've got yellow it seems like the real bright colors which in my eyes sometimes seem like i don't like real gaudy colors i like natural colors but when you're throwing that flute or that flute Blood worm. That floating worm, it seems like a reactionary type bite in a way, and it seems like the best baits are the brightest ones that you can get. So, what's some of you guys' favorite floating worm colors? Um, okay, yeah, we have some questions here. 
Hey Dave, yeah, uh, the new floating dead on plastic. Yes, I have tried it. Um, we made some earlier tonight. I don't know where they are. Um, hold on a second. <laughs> Yeah, so um, these core shots right here, um, these are um, with the uh, floating stuff. Um, yeah, let me, uh, yeah, so yeah, these core shots are with the floating plastic. And I'll tell you, the floating plastic is really, really great. Uh, the first ones I did, I made some uh, finesse worms. I literally just put them in this little bucket of water and I left them there for 72 hours and they never got waterlogged and sank. So uh, it definitely does what it says. Um, yeah, yes, Ben, Brad's stuff is wild. He is one of the most creative colorway uh, thinkers I I've ever seen. It's, it's just incredible. He makes, um, he makes like these cool, like uh, alien worms here. Like that's real. You know, that's that's what Brad does. He, well, that's not what he does. That's just one of many things that he does well. Oh yeah, Terrence, South African special is awesome. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Thank you, Marling Bates. I'm glad you like the pinfish. Your channel is awesome, buddy. You make some of the coolest stuff ever. I'm honored that you're even watching my uh, <laughs> stream here. That's Huh, that's awesome. We have the biggest player in the bait YouTube game. Um, that's awesome. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, it's uh it's it's a cool it's a cool bait. I've actually sold some, so I I have to have to make myself sit down and, and do these again. So um yeah, it's awesome. Thank you so much for tuning in. That's was not expecting something that awesome. So your your channel rocks, buddy. You're doing amazing things if y'all have not seen marling baits which if you're on my channel you've probably seen his um the the stuff that he can create out of wood will blow your mind it's uh it's it's not even fair <laughs> jermaine how's it going man tubes yeah yeah okay so you're throwing tubes instead of creature baits to give them a different le a absolutely um now. Yeah, I I don't have any I don't have much experience with tubes. He has bed fished a lot with tubes. Um, so with the tube, I know a lot of guys flip a tube. Uh, a lot of the tubes that I've seen have a hollow uh, have a hollow body. Right, right. So what I found a struggle with is burying a hook or getting a, a hook to hold and keeping the profile on that tube. So. Do some of the tubes that you you guys throw are they hollow or are they like a normal plastic where they're through and through? Um, and what's some of the things that you guys do on a hollow tube uh, for bed fishing? Or if you flip them, do you flip a hollow tube? Do you have any like tips to you know hook placement or how how do y'all do it? Um, stuff like that is stuff that is. Pretty uh, new down here. Us in the south don't have a whole lot of tube experience, mm -hmm. so I've never even I've never even shot one. I've never shot one, so Ben, all right, buddy. Thank um, all you got to do is type in Bates, buddy, and he'll pop right up. He's he's top of the game. Um, Bobby, like we, everybody's YouTube channel wishes it was that expe uh, uh, um, successful. It's uh, M R M A R L I N G Bates. So, hey, Finheads, what's going on, man? Yeah. Hollow tube with a Texas rig with a rattle. There you go. Hey. I like solid that. solid head tubes. Yeah. Solid head tube. Honestly, I think I'm trying to think of I think Bass Pro Shops is really the only brand that we can find, you know, in our local tackle shops that has a tube and theirs is completely hollow, so I didn't think about that. Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's a that's, it. that's the best kept secret right there is Alka-Seltzer. Now, your Alka-Seltzer, do you throw it in the tube or do you stick it in uh, pantyhose? Which right. sounds crazy, but um, I've also caught catfish throwing stink bait in pantyhose, um, which oh, yeah. actually works awesome. Um, so uh, yeah, how do you how do you fish your Alka-Seltzer? 
throwing it in the tube is actually a great idea. So um, I'm sure highly frowned upon, but it sure gets those reaction bites. Not even reaction bite, that is straight anger out of right. some of those spawning fish. But I went ahead and bagged up some of the baits that we've made already. We just got us a little goodie bag for tomorrow and um, kind of touched on this before, but I love scent. Um, yeah, he does. So I, I went ahead and scented it up with garlic. I love a good garlic scent and uh, hopefully they work out for us. But uh, Bass Assassin, your molds won't go all the way through. What exactly are you talking about? The cavity isn't filling? Um, let let me know what exactly what what exactly problem that you're having. It's cool talking to everybody. Yeah, and um, what else was I gonna say? I had another question to ask you guys. Um, shoot. Well, we're going. What we're gonna do tomorrow? We're fishing a what they call a prairie lake. It's got a lot of lily pads, real shallow water. It's got some hydrilla, uh, but we're going to be primary, primarily flipping tomorrow. Uh, what do you guys prefer? Do you like to throw a punch skirt, uh, or do you like to just peg a peg a two ounce, one and a half ounce, one ounce tungsten straight to your bait, uh, or do you like to throw some flare on it? And uh, or there's there's a lot of guys I know that still flip a jig. Oh yeah. And uh, you know, in real heavy cover like pads or you know we get a lot of gator grass which is real stringy tough grass do you flip a jig in that um, so shoot us some ideas on you know some of your favorite things to flip um, I'm gonna pour some more all right we're about to pour yeah so have y'all seen the divider cup if not you got to do it it's awesome it is awesome You know, it's nice being able to do this without a camera right here that I have to like pour over and stuff, you know. Where do I get molds and injectors from? That's uh, that's a great question. Um, check out my guide video. I do a, a video called uh, The Complete Guide to Baits. Um, I go into detail about all my suppliers. Um, but for molds and injectors, for injectors, check out Bass Tackle. Um, Bass Tackle also uh, probably has the biggest selection of molds. Um, top quality molds, uh, BTS molds, Angling AI, uh, Enforcer. Um, but for injectors, I would just stay with Bass Tackle. That seems to be everybody's favorite. Plastisol is not going all the way through the cavity. Uh, sounds like, sounds like your plastisol is too cold. Um, yeah, so, so, sounds like you're shooting the plastic a little too cold. Um, also, if the mold is really cold, when that hot plastic goes in, it gets shocked and it will lock up on you and it will not fill the extremities of the mold. Um, so if I take an intricate mold, so, you know, a mold like this, a lot of stuff has to fill in. And if your plastisol is too cold, 
um, it won't it won't go through all these extremities. Um, and uh, so and, and and even if your plastic is hot, if your mold is cold, you know, if you live in northern states or it's just um, it's really hard to to get a cold mold to work properly. So um, try upping your temperatures and you should be okay. Hey, where'd you go, man? Oh. So yeah, we just, um, oh, they're still running. But yeah, we just did a couple hand pour worms. But yeah, we're uh, we're we're going fishing tomorrow, so hopefully uh, hopefully something hopefully something good happens and we can uh, uh, at least have a video from it. So, hey Bryce, uh, I've not ever been fishing in Indiana. I've never been to Indiana. Um, I don't get out much, <laughs> unfortunately. I'm uh, I'm a new father, and you know I'm home with the baby every night. And uh, yeah, so practice abstinence, people. Abstinence. Uh, let's see. Should I use an injector to help go through the cavity? Well, if you're using an injection mold, you have to use an injector. So if you look at how a normal injection mold is laid out, the plastic has to travel down this runner and enter the cavities. It can only do that with the um, with with pressure. And you can only achieve that with injection. Now, if you don't have an injector and you still want to make molds, use an open pour mold. You literally just take a cup and you pour it in. No injector needed, and uh, you'll never have to worry about your um, you'll never have to worry about your mold not filling uh, because it's an open pour. Uh, Terrence, difference in action of a weighted and non-weighted uh, screw swim bait hook. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I only throw a weighted swim bait hook. Um, a, because I can cast it further. I can feel it better. I have more control over the bait. Um, I can control it getting down in the water column. Unless I'm throwing a top water buzzing bait, I don't ever throw one that's not weighted. Um, on a frog, you know. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. On a frog, I throw a weightless swim bait hook, essentially. Um, a lot of times what work, works great, too, is, uh, I can't remember who makes it, but a lot of times with a screw-in, unweighted hook, um, it's kind of time-consuming and can be kind of a tedious task to rig them up. So I love throwing a... A regular offset shank or a wide gap, whether it's a gamakatsu or whatever, I like to throw that. And if I'm fishing no, real thick vegetation, where the frog or whatever will get hung up, and uh, like a, a a big easy or a big swim bait like that, they make a screw lock nose that you can put in, which works phenomenal. So I, I kind of like to take that approach. Oh man. Oh yeah, still a little gooey. Huh? Yeah, still really gooey. Back up toward. What's my favorite chatterbait brand? Um. Z-Man. Yeah, probably probably the original Z-Man chatterbait. Um, I like the ones that Bass Pro Shop makes pretty good. Um, I like a heavy chatterbait. Uh, you know, but because of the way that chatterbaits have the blade on. Hey, Scott, thank you so much for tuning in, man. Hope you'll keep watching the videos. Um, I'll have a heavy chatterbait so that it gets down in the water. If I throw one that's like a quarter ounce or anything like that, I just feel I, it's more like a wake bait. <laughs> so um, I would say a Z-Man. Uh, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can find you know guys making them themselves that do a really good job. Nichols Lures, uh, which is only about 20 miles from me, Thomasville, Georgia. He makes like a Sabre swim jig and a Sabre uh, or something chatterbait. He has some of the uh, the, the best uh, wire baits, I think, that there are. The Name withheld. Thing. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in, man. Yeah, we're about to get out of here, too. We've been on here an hour, so.
switch a second. That's why I like that divider cup. This is nothing but glitter. This is just a glitter color. And um, you can just you can just pour these uh, pour these cool color blends so easily, so efficiently, so quickly, and uh, and you get some cool stuff. So micro chatter baits, yeah, yeah, I yeah I would say the heavier the better usually. Do I like the Z-Man Elastec products? No, I actually do not. Um, First time I ever tried the uh, the stretchy plastic was when Strike King released it as 3x plastic, and um, yeah, it'll last you a lifetime. Um, but uh, I just the the way that that pla it's it's so gummy. It, I feel like it doesn't rig well. It doesn't hold a hook well. If I um you know if if I was to rig up an Elastec worm. I can't ever keep the hook buried in the plastic. It just to, to me they to me they stay hung up in the weeds. Um, Brian Latimer's obviously got it down, Pat. <laughs> but uh, I've never had an Elastec bait perform as well as regular plastic salt. Me me personally. Hey Tom Conway, what's going on, man? How do I get the end of my tail from denting when I hand pour? Uh, I don't really know. Uh, hey, Baron, thank you so much. Flip six to eight foot grass around Crowder Point. Yeah, hi, Drilla. I told you, we're fishing Drilla tomorrow. So. Um, yeah, Terrence, I don't know. Uh, just pour slowly? Uh, on YouTube. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, he's been on here. Yep, he's an amazing... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Elastec will make will melt other baits. It's so the Elastec plastic is some weird stuff, guys. It's not regular plastisol. They don't even heat it up like it. That stuff is completely different. It's it's not injected the same. It doesn't have any of the same properties as plastisol. It's actually shot into the molds cold, using extreme pressure. Uh, it's not heated up like plastisol it, it doesn't gel like plastisol it's completely different it's it's not plastisol it's it's uh it's really it's really 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 crazy stuff so um but yeah well hey guys we're gonna we're gonna sign off uh i've got to go to i gotta get in bed because we're actually i'm actually going fishing tomorrow so but uh yeah we're gonna take some of these uh take some of these baits and hopefully do something good with them so we're gonna have um uh, hopefully have a good fishing trip. Oh, paradiddles! Hey, yeah. Hey, Avery, come hold the phone real quick. Somebody requested a paradiddle. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Let's find something to uh, assist. I don't know if they can hear that. Uh, let's do. Uh, do the top of the mold. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, paradiddle. Right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. Paradiddles, it's one of the best rudiments. Move it around. Yeah. Yeah, but hey, thank you so much guys for tuning in. Uh, hopefully we'll have a decent uh, fishing trip tomorrow. So, fingers crossed, I'm a, I'm a much better bait maker than I am fisherman. So, uh, the world's worst fishing, that's actually not a joke. Like the name is true. Not not all that good. Like I should be a lot better than I am, but we'll try and catch them uh, tomorrow and hopefully get a video uh, put out again. So uh, thanks so guys, thanks so much guys for tuning in tonight. Florida Bass and hey, it's Parker. What's up, Parker? Hey, we're going to Jackson tomorrow, man. Come see us. We'll be out there. Come come uh, come say hey. So, but uh, anyway, y'all have a good night and uh, thank you so much for uh, for tuning into our first live stream. I'm sure we'll do it again. We'll get Big Bird on here one night. We'll get all three of us. And uh, we'll we'll uh, see if we can all get together and talk fishing again. So thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. All right. Yeah, that's fun right there.